Hello guys and welcome to another profile tree video. So in today's video we are going to be looking at what a wireframe is in web design. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So firstly I just want to get your attention on what exactly a wireframe is. So in web design a wireframe is a visual representation of the basic structure and layout of a web page or application. Now it's simplified uh, it is a simplified low fidelity blueprint that outlines the placement of ele elements such as navigation menus, you've got content sections, buttons and images without focusing on the specific design details. Design details meaning like links and if it's clickable, the animation, things like that. So to quickly demonstrate a wireframe, if you take a look at the image on our right side here, um, with this individual actually sketching out a wireframe. So on the left, it looks like they're creating a um, a possible email contact form. And then on their second one, they're uh, showing the, like it could be a possible newsletter or a advertisement on the left side. So they've got sections of A, B and C. So these are like your different ideas that you have in mind, of course, if you're creating a home page, maybe you'll have different ones to accommodate for. So you'll have a home page, but you'll have different designs. Some of them may have a hero section with a really, really bold image or video background, or it could be a nice plain white background with a bit of text. So there's a couple of different options as to why you would want to create a wireframe in the first place. And it's all to do with planning and research. That is what a wireframe is. And just to add on top of the wireframe, of course, the purpose really is to create that overall structure and organization of the interface before diving into the visual design phase. Of course, if you're creating it and you don't have that particular plan, planning and research, you may start to lose track and start to de designing things that shouldn't have been there. So it's pretty much just a specification. That's what a wireframe initially is. Uh, it will help designers and stakeholders to visualize, visualize the layout and flow of the website or application just to ensure that the content and functionality are effectively communicated. So those are the key factors to a, a functional wireframe. So this is just uh, an example of a possible wireframe as well. So. Wireframes are typically created using simple shapes, lines, placeholders for content, and they're often used in black and white. Now, of course, I've added a little bit of color, but it's just to add some gradient and just to give you, or just to separate each one. Now, yes, as I've mentioned, it's either in a black, black and white or a gray scale. Uh, now, there's no elaborate visual styling, just to avoid distractions. It's pretty much straight to the point. Uh, we're focusing on the structure and the functionality. Now, wireframes can be created using various tools. It could be from pen and paper, as we've seen earlier on. Uh, it could be digital design software, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Now, some people choose to do this as well, just a general structure. So this could be a fashion clothing store. Um, doesn't have to be particularly, uh, it could be any store. So as you can see, we've got the home page, which connects to different sub pages, which is your shop. You've got your shoes, blog and about. Then on top of that, there's more sub pages within that sub page, which is men's and women's. Then from the shoes, you've got Adidas, Nike and Vans. So that's a very, very simple base structure of a wireframe. Uh, now, this isn't necessarily it, because of course you have to add some designs. You have to do the layout and structure of different shapes uh, to add on. And there's quite a lot of things to consider. So number one would be your layout and structure. Now wireframes define the overall placements of elements on the page. That would be your header, your footer, sidebars and content sections. And they'd establish the hierarchy and relationships between different parts of the interface. Now imagine the homepage. So take it uh, from this. If we had the homepage there, then of course we have our section. 
So I'm actually just going to use profile tree uh, or profile tree website just to demonstrate. So uh, imagine this was completely a base foundation. You've got your wireframe going on. Uh, this was your layout and structure. So you have, first of all, your top section, which is your header. Then this is your main section, which is your, um, you know, hero section or categorized section. And all the way to the bottom is where you would have your footer and content sections. And you've got your sidebars as well. So a couple of different parts like this, you've got your sidebar or your mega menu, things like that. There's a lot to consider when having the website built. Then next, of course, you would think about the content blocks. Now, uh, content blocks, that's pretty, uh, pretty much means wireframes represent the different content blocks that will be uh, present on the page. This could be your headings. As you can see, there's some headings, um, your paragraphs, the images within the website, uh, videos and interactive elements. Now they define the general size and position of these content elements. Then you would consider your navigation and interaction. Now wireframes outline the navigation elements. These would be like your menu item where you have your buttons and it links to different pages and then how the users will interact with them. Uh, of course, with this one, we've got light mode, and, uh, light mode and dark mode. So that's another another like interactive uh, piece to this website. And pretty much they provide a basic understanding of how the users will move through the website or application and access different features. Now, lastly, you would have your functionality and interactive interactivity. So while wireframes focus more on the structure than the actual design, they can also include basic interactive elements such as drop-down menus as we uh, can see here, but this is still at a development stage and you could have, you know, form fields. So if we scroll down all the way here, uh, well, this is what we'll ha we have, which is the newsletter. So that's uh, the functionality to it. Of course, you have your buttons again, uh, to, and then uh, other intended functionality and user interactions within the website. So like the search bar to search up a specific blog or any parts to the website. Now, the big question is, what development tools can I use? So there's quite a few options to pick uh, in terms of the tools that you can use. You have different ones like Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is a powerful and widely used design and prototyping tool. It allows you to create interactive wireframes. Uh, it offers a range of features and tools specifically designed for wireframing, uh, like UI uh, kits, customizable components, interactive transitions. Uh, another popular one that's used by UI and UX designers, which is Figma. Now that is a cloud-based design and collaboration tool. It enables you to create wireframes collabor collaboratively in real time. Now it offers a w r wide range of design tools and features. This includes prototyping, capabilities you've got um, different projects as well to interact with also you can link them in uh, I think there's one there's Azure or Axer RP now it's a comprehensive prototyping tool that allows you to create a detailed and interactive wireframe and it offers advanced features like conditional logic you've got dynamic content and user flows so that makes it more suitable for maybe complex wireframing and prototyping projects. Uh, there's one called Sketch as well. So Sketch is a vector design or vector based design tool. And that's primarily used for by designers to create user interfaces. It offers a variety of plugins and libraries that make wireframing efficient and easy. Uh, it's got a in interface that's fairly robust as well in capabilities. So I would say Sketch is another popular choice for creating wireframes. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take a look at one of the wireframes, which is Figma. So that's the one that's highly used, uh, just to give you a clear idea on how the wireframing works. Okay, so this is an example of one of the far, or the wireframe development tools. So this is called Figma. And as you can see, this is pretty much just a SketchUp 
of the different navigation or the different pages and sub pages within a website. So if we look closely, all your tools are here. Uh, you have it all on the top where you can add some text. Uh, you can add some shapes, tools, you, you name it, all, all of it's there. You can add comments as well. So if it's a collaboration uh, project, of course, people can comment, oh, this would not be the right color. I don't want to have any uh, smooth edges on the button. I want it to be a, a full square button. So there's a lot of things that you can comment with and that. So as you can see on the right side, you could see the colored background as well. Uh, that's pretty much just an area there, just to show the different buttons and cards that I'll, you know, potentially be using on the website. You could see that this right side here could be a product, so that could be used for e-commerce, uh, or see that's pretty much the placeholder of this black square. You have your paragraph below, which could be stating a product or a a blog story and of course you can learn more or read more now there's this one here as well this title so this could be potentially a individual's profile uh, where it features one two and three could be a cv something like that now there's the navigation uh, if you guys have a quick look on that so of course this was customized as well to um, have three or four different types of versions on the navigation. So of course we have a logo on the left and the different sub pages in the middle and then your sign up to the right. Uh, second one is to do with the logo on the left, uh, navigation all to the right side. So you get the gist, it's pretty much just a couple of different designs. Now there's a couple of different designs on a hero section. So it's pretty much like the, um, what you're gonna offer as a design to the client. If you're using this in web design, of course, you're going to show this to the developer, tell them what is possible and what isn't possible. So, of course, you, uh, you as a you, UI UX designer, or of course, if, if even better, you're a developer, you would know which would be um, which you can do and which you can't do. So that's why you lay out a couple of different designs for the developer to choose. Then, of course, you've got your social media. So that's a couple of different versions of the social media. Then your features, of course, so that could be part of the sub pages, um, well, different sections on the actual home page. And of course, features to the right. So that's just, a, of course, a mirrored version of the left one. Then, of course, your CTA, you've got footer as well. So it's all pretty much there for you. You've got posts, pricing, so a couple of different options uh, in order to create but yes, hopefully that gives you an insight to what a wireframe development tool looks like. Now you don't need to get this fancy. If you have a pen and paper, as I've mentioned earlier on, go ahead and design your sketches. Of course, this enables you to do collaborative work. You don't have to photocopy and print out the same design to uh, other people. Or of course, um, if you want to make changes, you can do it straight away. Whilst if you're using pen and paper, of course, you have to change that design. You have to score and mark things out. While this one, you can permanently delete a particular item that you can't do uh, physically. So that's just some of the features as to why you may want to consider doing a digital version of wireframing. But guys, that pretty much reaches the end of the video. If you guys found this informative at all, or if you have any questions at all regarding on wireframing, please do let us know in the comment section below. Of course, if you want to find out more information on web design, please do check out our website at www.profiletree.com. Of course, if you want more inform information, check out our different blogs as well. Uh, but other than that, that, as I've mentioned, this is the end of the video. So I will see you guys for the next one. Thank you very much for watching.